gentlemen all right so what i have today with me now is a jigging master monster game first impression the moment when i held the reel pretty heavy about 700 over grams for um you know in competition this they call it as 8000 or 16000 s so basically i believe it's between the 8000 to 14000 sizes of the shimano instead uh and the salty gas the same range that kind of sizes uh whole reel is a uh, full metal body except for this build arm i believe this part should be maybe plastic the rest majority are metal okay and of course a lot of holes for my case i'm not a fan of potted holes all these potted holes to an uh, impression marketing strategy is to tell you that oh i try to lighten but honestly without all this without all these holes it can't be lightened to anywhere also okay that's my that's my own personal opinion then second thing with a lot of potted holes the design must be even more advanced or you must outsmart when you pot holes you must know where the water will go to you see the knob here it has got the exposed bearing this is the first thing you'll get the first one to be rusted you know they should have a cover to cover that bearing and the screw itself then if the potted outside makes sense well as you can see the anti reverse the bill roto the spool here it's very fancy design but and again it's all exposed to all the tiny gaps screws and joints all these are very prone to salt water treatment salt water ingression that's about it very straightforward okay and but for the cranking feel for a cranking feel a china make reel that the feeling on the gear itself the gear cut i'm quite impressed really i'm quite impressed so the upcoming video the pictures i will do a tear down and i'll slowly review all the parts and components to you guys so stay tuned for it as you guys can see this is the spool nut the spool lock nut all right well the thing now is this part where they lock to the shelf this is a stainless steel so okay it's good okay this part is stainless steel and outside is the aluminium then for the clicker this part a lot of maker they actually use plastic because plastic is softer they can absorb a bit more impact and then of course it's cheaper and replaceable for this jm use potted holes on the aluminium which means aluminium it's slightly softer and it has memory once it wears off you don't hear your clicking sound means it's gone but probably take another few years or maybe few thousand turns you know and they are trying to use the so-called shimano style of the cross spring as well okay let me show you something very contradicting right you see there's an o-ring here so the o-ring here once this thing screw in it prevents the water from going in between the screw thread this side correct but then take a look take a closer look i am i have unscrewed a little bit so that easier for me to do it with one hand later they have the exposed bearing inside here has got no gasket which means you prevent the water from going in here but you did not prevent the water from going from this side <laughs> very contradicting design see it's the exposed bearing can see the top drag it's has got this flowery cut design similar to shimano then as for the drag washer the finishing it's pretty raw you know they are laser cut compared to shimano's or daiwa they are pretty much more finished but these are stainless steel and laser cut so it's strong it's a uh, well cut but finishing wise for the kind of price that we are going to pay of course i will expect a little bit more from this kind of small little details well to each his own okay to each his own and for the bottom look at the bottom drag this is very much similar to shimano as well 
and they have got two bearings sitting in the center here. There's a two bearing, yeah. They got two bearing for the smoothness and balance as well. Part that the spool sits on, the clicker area, this serrated jacket area, it's a little bit way over design. Why? Very thick. A lot of times Shimano uh, Daiwa, they only thicken to, for weight, weight reduction, they only have this part, this bottom piece that is thicker and smaller. Because if you have got a, uh, and of course I understand why they make it thick. The thicker, the easier for them to cut this shape, especially when using laser. Okay, and then if they want to use a thinner material, a thinner material, they can't laser cut. The, the metal plate will warp too thin. There's a minimum diameter thickness for them to laser cut. So in order to, if they want to cut a slightly thinner one to reduce weight, okay, they have to wire cut or to punch out. But to wire cut and punch out the cost, what, to punch out, you need volume to make the die cut. Then to wire cut, you also need to vo need the volume to balance off the value. So, look at this bloody washer. Six, nine gram. There's almost close to 10 gram for one little washer. You know? Why I say that you will have a high maintenance headache? Look at this. Okay, I remove the rotor. The thing is, I like it. I always like this kind of thing. This lock nut is stainless steel. Mm, I like. Okay, something impressive. So, yeah, why I say maintenance high? After I remove the lock nut, okay, I remove the rotor. You imagine, down here, this black color is the bearing. Okay. And then this part, you see the join. Three screws. The water is going to go through here. Going to go through here. Everywhere around the rotor, you're going to splash onto your three little screw here. Once the water seep into the screw, it get jams up. Oh, oh, you will have a headache. Okay, let me remove the screw. So I remove this part. Okay, there is no gasket. There is no gasket at this so-called cover. See, I remove. There is no gasket here. No gasket around here. No gasket here. No gasket here. So which means the water is for sure going in around this area. Okay, remember. There is no gasket on top here. There's no gasket on top here. Nothing there. And yeah. You see, there's no gasket anywhere around here. So so as well, this part. When I remove, take a look, take a look. Out. Oh. There's no gasket. And right here is the access to your internal mechanism the water will go inside here right here look at the cover it's going in and it's going to jam everything up we can see the drive gear it's pressed in okay two kinds of material this should be brass and this should be stainless steel and you can see the little holes here can you see the little holes? It's splint. So I believe this has been pressed in. Good and bad. Okay, good and bad. If it's not pressed and secure properly, this thing will come loose. Okay, this gear will come loose. And for the amount of holes, I'm not sure how much did how well did they test it. The holes, you see the bone, the skeleton here. In between each hole the skeleton it's a little bit too thin okay i got no way to tell i got no way to but just makes me feel have a lightening feel sensation yeah the reel has been very well lightened but at the same time this is the most crucial area where it 
receive a lot a lot of stress so how long can it last how much stress can it handle will it fail i got no answer well i'm not going to have an answer as well so i'm just reviewing you guys see and judge for yourself okay remove the gear see almost like a daiwa design the gear the mechanism style this is pretty common among a lot of reels actually so the the upper drive gear the lower cam gear that drive this cam shaft and move the shaft up and down so this mechanism design is very straightforward and really co very common the shaft here very beef up very thick but what kind of grade of stainless steel i'm not sure well it is thick but is it hard or not it's another story so outlook is pretty presentable but in terms of performance i'm not sure okay main pinion gear the pinion gear design i'm quite impressed because why a lot of japanese reels the upper pinion they use big bearing then the lower one right they use a smaller size but as for this reel they do not have a lower pinion here they use two big bearing and support at the upper half here okay which is quite impressive you know so because the bigger bearing can take more load can take more stress and then bigger of course for the bearing itself bigger is better at this area okay and look at the look at the reel i forgot to show you this is the anti-reverse dogging the backup dogging right here yeah uh here is the dog tooth the dogging tooth so okay for the pinion gear design here i give it give credit to them basically i'm sure pretty common very common question people ask so what i think of the real for my case for the price value the color the construction construction is very tough uh, visually very tough but uh, realistically how tough is it i'm not sure even though video people can show oh the owner himself jig how big fish when but the problem is these are all marketing how many reels did he damage on the trip how many reels have grinding gears after the trip nobody will know because these are all marketing so for me i'll just take all this kind of marketing gimmick with a pinch of salt other than that, uh, color-wise, gear feel very smooth because they are replicating Daiwa's. Okay, they are replicated. They replicated Daiwa's gear cut, the Saltika gear cut, the old one, the old design. Then as well as um, water ingression is a very big issue. <clears throat> Even though this wheel is very fancy for me, I think it's a no-no because when time to come, if this wheel were to repair or to have parts replacement well i'll tell you it's gonna be quite a headache yeah so for my case i wouldn't go for it i'll rather top up a bit more maybe another three four hundred i will get a japanese wheel with a decent after sale service for parts you know that you can get sd and of course assurance other than that as well as resale value you know this wheel is really heavy that's what i can say <coughs> Alright, thanks for watching and hope you can share around if you are you know if you find the video is uh, meaningful. Thank you very much.